might be Lincoln. Lincoln. Bring it to you. Yes, sir. Turn it on. Make it come up. You don't need that. High tech. High tech. Meeting the Macon County Board of Commissioners to order. And happy to see a lot of good faces here. Looks like most of them are regulars. Maybe David. Got a new one. Anyway, <coughs> welcome. We're happy that y'all are here and keep us straight. So we need it. Anyway, with that being said, we'll move on to announcements. <coughs> I have one. We had a uh, quick little press gathering uh, this afternoon at 2 p.m. at the Highlands Catchers Hospital. Uh, denoting and recognizing uh, the Highlands Cashers Hospital Foundation and Missions donation of a phenomenal new ambulance uh, to make county emergency services. So uh, it's really spectacular in the fact that it, I, even I, I worked on one for 15 years, but I used to have to duck. I can now stand up in one without bumping my head. Uh, you no longer have to uh, manually put the uh, stretchers in and out of it. It has a, a mechanized operation that all you do is run the stretcher in the back of the ambulance and it'll pick it up and lift it right in. And uh, I hope <coughs> uh, that that'll help with some back issues. Uh, after doing it for that many years, I understand. So uh, we're grateful to uh, both Mission and Hollis Cashers Hospital Foundation for doing that. It was, uh, yeah, it's nice. It's a tone setter. And again, it, uh, and what it all boils down to taking it off the backs of uh, the Macon County taxpayers through the goodness of some people that saw a need and wanted to help. So. Anybody else? I'd like to say glad to have Mr. Cole. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Chair, just an item of housekeeping. If you'll recall, back in August, we received the um, recommendations for the grading license uh, the planning board had discussed that the grading license portion <coughs> of the sedimentation erosion control ordinance if again that was in august and at the time chester had um, advised the board to review that change they were making to the grading licensure in correlation with the entire ordinance become familiar with the ordinance and and the role that this section will play in that ordinance with that being said um, that will have to have uh, a public hearing. So I was thinking and spoke with Chester today, we were thinking at the December 12th meeting um, to go ahead if, if the board so desires and get that item on the agenda, get an advertised public hearing for that December 12th meeting so we can discuss those changes and um, hold that public hearing. Or, or alternatively, if, if you don't know that you have general consensus to move forward with it, at least either tonight or the 28th or in December, have that discussion to see if there's preliminary interest in moving forward with it. I mean, there's obviously some expense associated with uh, you know, preparing the document and, and advertising it for public hearing and that sort of thing. And if there's not going to be uh, support for it, the uh, county can save a little bit of money. There's general support for it, or if it looks like there's a consensus, 
more support of it than, than Derek could go out and probably get to, uh, to uh, try to get that moving forward. It's one of those things also that uh, the change probably needs to be run by the folks at the state as well uh, as far as the sedimentation. And, uh, so December, does that give us enough time then, I think, to... Yeah, I, I think I think that we can. If, if, if the board is inclined to uh, to move forward with those recommendations, uh, we could probably have it ready to, to go in December. I just hadn't heard any discussion as to whether or not y'all are ready to move forward with those recommendations, or whether y'all needed some time to talk about those recommendations, uh, the pros and cons of those recommendations. Well, I'm personally ready to discuss it. Anybody else? Anyone? December work good? December. Work good? Yeah, but we don't necessarily well, have to hold the yes. public hearing uh, on it in December uh, if, if you want to have okay. some preliminary discussions about it first. Uh, I'm, everybody? I'm willing to discuss it, yes. Okay. Well, let's just discuss and we'll maybe hold the public hearing at a January meeting. Uh, give if us there's a, a general consensus that it looks like you want to pursue it, then okay. that it's might be the appropriate it's way good. to do it. Okay. Good. Anything else under announcements? Uh, no. Mr. Chairman, on the, just reminded by the Southwest Commission meeting on the 27th, uh, of course, those of us that meet with the DOT is at 5 o'clock, and it still says boiler room. I don't know. I guess that's still the right location. If not, we'll certainly let everybody know. So if you've not been to a Southwest Commission or to a TAC meeting, I'd encourage you to come. And also on December the 6th, what was that day again? 27th. And it's 5 o'clock, it's 6 o'clock if you just come to the Southwest Commission meeting. And then on December the 6th, I know Derek and myself, Patrick Bettencourt, and I hope some others can go to Asheville. Uh, the HA secretary will be there along with a lot of others talking about uh, the status of child welfare in West North Carolina. So uh, we look forward to that discussion. That's at the uh, Crown Plaza. It lasts from 10 o'clock in the morning to 3 in the afternoon. So uh, if you're available and want to ride or go with us, I think you'll find it very interesting. Okay. I, I just want to say thank you to all the people who participated in our Veterans Day program, and uh, we had a good turnout, and uh, especially the Charters of Freedom, the unveiling of that, I think I added a lot to our county. Again, I appreciate everybody who took the time to be with us, even my partner back there. <laughs> veterans Day, appreciate you. Amen. <laughs> Probably the best Veterans Day that I've ever seen. Uh, best yeah, team. Thank you. Thank well, you for helping organize that. Well, 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 it was good. <coughs> all right, well, is there any, anything further? <coughs> well, I'll uh, stand up. We'll observe a moment of silence, and I'll ask Commissioner Higdon uh, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Bill, before Commissioner Higdon starts, I certainly remember Councilman Billy Meister, his family. Uh, Billy lost his courageous battle with, with cancer. Uh, Billy served not only the town of Franklin well, but the county well during his years of service. So uh, remember, it's, it's always a bad time to lose a member of the family, but during the holidays, it seems especially tough. So remember Dinah and that family as we have a moment of silence. hearing proposed making county community transportation program application and transit director miss kim angel welcome kim hi 
Thank you Last very time much. We were looking at you on a camera, it seems like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Technology's great. Technology's great. I was. In Raleigh? I can't remember. Indiana. No, I was in Indiana. We got we received the um, Propane Education Research Council Award for converting our fleet to, to uh, the propane. So we were up there receiving that award, and I appreciate the cooperation of the board by letting me be there and attend the meeting at the same time electronically. Um, that was I, I really do appreciate that because I, I struggled with what am I going to do. So it is grant time. Already looking at FY19, can you believe it? Um, we are in the process or have applied, have submitted four applications um, for, for grant funding for next year. And I think uh, Mr. Tate and I decided, Chairman Tate and I decided that the best way to, to approach this so that we meet the requirements of the public hearing um, as they're set forth by DOT and FTA is I'm gonna give just a brief description of the program that we're applying for and um, he does need to we did not have anybody signed up to speak and I also did not I need to note that I did not receive any written comments so but at the, after I give the explanation of the program um, there's just it, it still needs to be addressed asking any member of the public if they have any comment on those so we'll tag team it if you, if you will gotcha. all right so the first application that I'll discuss is the 5311, the administrative application. Um, and I managed to not bring anything with me. I had all, oh, there it is. That grant is gonna be a total amount of $190,009. Local share on that will be 15%, uh, which, which will equal $28,501. That's a little less than what we received for this year for, for FY18, um, which was, we've gotten an allocation of for the next five years. Um, for some reason, FY18 was kind of a year where we got more and then we start dropping off as, as the, the years go by. <coughs> Just a little bit. Um, that grant is to provide administrative services. It, pay salaries for three full-time employees in the transit department, um, helps provide utilities, advertising, drug testing, marketing, printing, and travel. Um, as I said, there is a 15% match on that. This is a grant we've had as many years as I have been here. Um, and hopefully the funding as long as it, it comes through FTA because 80% of those funds are federal and only 5% are state funds. Um, we hope to continue to see that and we'll continue to apply for it. Okay, Mr. You want to run through all of them and then I'll, 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 I'll go through and ask the public's comments. Do you want to do it that way? Yeah. However you Just want to do keep, it. Keep tracking. I'm good. All right. So the 5310 operating grant is um, to improve mobility by removing barriers to transportation services and expand mobility options for elderly, which is um, defined as 65 and older under this particular program, and individuals with disabilities. This particular um, grant is a 50% match. There are, there are no state funds involved in this grant. The total request is gonna be 165,000. The local share will be 82,000. I've got to put my glasses on because I can't see, I'm sorry. 82,500. Um, the majority of that co will come from contract revenue that we already have. The way I have it now, it, it, the way it worked out when I was actually doing the grant application, looks like there may be about $7,500 in um, county dollars put in toward that 165,000. Now, if revenues come in greater than what we project for next year, then obviously that reduces the county amount. I'm going to skip down to the mobility management one because the capital one's going to take a few minutes for me to, to um, talk about. But the mobility management is basically a continuation of a program that we had in place that we were sharing with Jackson County. This year we are sharing with um, Swain Public Transit through the state of Franklin and Bryson City. and um, 
we are still in the process of implementing that. I think at your next meeting, we hope to have an interlocal agreement on that program. So this will actually continue that program through FY19. Mobility manager works with um, new riders. They work to, they visit and educate businesses, doctor's offices, and groups on the benefits of and the use of public transit. Um, they administer our required surveys that we have to do twice a year. They'll work to improve coordinated services and they will also create and distribute marketing materials for the transit program. Now going back up to the capital, <coughs> the total request is $265,245. Included in that request are three vans that will replace current vehicles that um, have met their service life. The Public Transportation Division has changed the, the way that we ask for our replacements and we can project mileage now. As long as you have met that required mileage at the end of May, they will still fund the vehicle provided that it was approved and, and there's funding there. Um, the advantage to that is we were getting to a point where we were having vehicles with 180, 190,000 miles on them before they were, we could actually get the replacement. So it'll be very advantageous to us. Um, we have one that, that's kind of on a borderline, so it'll be two to three vans. Also included in that are pro, uh, the propane conversion kits for those vans. We can't take them off the vans that we're replacing because they were the old um, Ford the 350s, I think that's what they were. And now we're getting the Ford Transit, so the motors are different. You have to have a different propane conversion kit, so. Um, and it also includes lettering for those vans. Also included in that request is a laptop for the mobility manager. Okay, so those are kind of the things that, that we're pretty sure are gonna happen. Now, the remaining items, uh, first is office furniture and training room furniture. That will be contingent upon, I've come to you before, we just talked last month, I guess it was, about the potential that we could get this funding um, to expand our building. If the facility is expanded, then obviously we're gonna have to have furniture to put in it. We don't know that, but we can't not ask for it. So it's better to ask for it and then say, hey, we didn't get it, we, we don't need this. So it is included in, in the grant request. Also included in that, is um, some paving for the parking lot that has been created alongside um, where the landfill had to go in and um, do the construction to get in to where they put the new landfill. There was an area there. Um, and so not 100% sure we'll even qualify for the paving of the parking lot, but hey, I'm one of those that I throw it out there and. If, if I get the money, great. And if I didn't, I didn't, I didn't lose anything other than a little bit of time to, to put the request in. Um, that would also pay to relocate the security cameras and the, the fencing. And we've talked with um, Duke about lighting for the area. So if for some reason it does not get funded, it, it will be put in um, in the budget next year. And so you'll hear me talking about it again, so. Uh, like I said, I figured mm, might as well go ahead and throw it in there. Maybe they'll have like this some money floating around that I, I can they, they say sure we'll, we'll give that to you. So that total request was $265,245. 10 percent of that total is $26,525. Um, again, that is subject to change based on what gets approved, what doesn't get approved. Um, we won't know that until they try to take these to the Board of Transportation in March or April, so it, it may even be included in our in our requests, depending on when our budgets go in for the county, and that may need to be adjusted um, after that. So those are the four programs. Uh, total on those programs is $671,854, and the local share for that is $142,686. Thank you, Kim. And that's it. So if you want to ask about. All right. And can we have that local share in your budget? <coughs> um, no. <laughs> I don't. Um, other than the operating that I talked about, where the grant for the 165000 about 7500 in county, and the rest of it, 
I, I typically ask for in, in county funds, um, and we generally end up needing less than the actual amount. Yes, 26, 26, 26. For local share. Oh, for the local, well, the total local share is 142,686 out of the 671,800 people. 686. I think you have the public hearing notice attached, didn't you? In the, in their packet? Yeah. But this will be in next year's budget, right? Yes, this is FY19. Yeah. This, the, the current year is, you know, just for comparison, because usually, Commissioner Higdon will ask me this, so I try to come prepare. Uh, no, this is our fiscal year. Now, federal fiscal year obviously starts in October, but the way the state, they, they use the money on the state fiscal year, and so I think they're typically like a year behind with, with their allocation or some strange something. So for the current fiscal year, for FY18, um, our total project expenses were 458558 with a, a share of 118835 So it's about $23,851 difference, but we were only asking for a minivan this year, where we're asking for three vans, some parking lot paving. You know, it, that capital really kind of monkeys with what it, it looks like as far as, as county dollars go. And I did forget to mention that on that, the 10% on the mobility manager, the $5,160, 2580 of that will be paid by the state of Franklin. So we'll only have a little over $2,500 in that entire project, so. Thank you. All right, a public hearing is held to allow the members of the community the opportunity to comment on transportation needs and the grant application. We didn't have anybody sign up. Is there anybody who wants to speak to that? Is there anyone who would like to speak to about the 5311 Community Transportation Program grant? No takers? <laughs> Is there anyone who would like to speak about the 5310 Operating Grant? Is there anyone who would like to speak about the Capital Program grant? Is there anyone who would like to speak about the Mobility Management grant? All right. Any further questions? I'm going to close the public hearing. Public well, I think there's a resolution to follow with in the in the in the general meeting. So we'll be looking for a uh, motion to approve the resolution, which I presume contains all these grants that have read in detail. Yet. It does. It exp it contains all them at the bottom. It also talks about you know. Um, the application for this. It is the the resolution. Basically, what the resolution says is that you know that. Um, it's been brought here before the board. The board understands that these are the, the requirements of, of the grant funding, um, that especially on the, the fourth one, or the, well, the last one, where it says, whereas Macon County hereby assures um, that it will provide the required local matching funds, has mm -hmm. the staff and the tech, technical capacity. Mm -hmm. Everything past looking mat local matching funds, I got but now the other is up to you. And it also authorizes the county manager as the, um, the authorized official to, sub he actually technically submits the grant application. He signs the um, 40 documents that we have to have signed following this public There'll hearing. There'll be a number of certifications and assurances that will have to be made in connection with those and you're authorizing you know, to make those necessary certifications and those will actually come later as well when the federal uh, when FTA releases those certs insurances so has everything should be all inclusive we get a motion to approve the resolution we motion to approve the res resolution that's presented we have a motion to approve we have a second second okay. motion to second any further discussion all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed Present. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you, Kim. I get out of here without tearing the stand down, I'll be doing well. All right. Item number six is our public comment period. Uh, 
We have one individual signed up. Is there anyone else who would like to speak besides Mr. Culpepper? Quiet night. Come on up. It's commission now. It's no longer all of correct? Uh, it will be council. Council member. Not, not quite yet, though, but uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, just a couple things I wanted to put on your radar. Uh, the Belden Circle Bridge, this is the single lane bridge right behind the New Ingles. It's actually part of the old highway. Uh, I know that it's slated for replacement pretty soon. I'd like to encourage you guys, if you know anybody at DOT, if you have any influence, let's go ahead and put a sidewalk on that bridge, um, or at least encourage them to put a sidewalk on that bridge, because what's happening is the people who used to walk to the Ingles when it was in the Kmart Plaza are still walking to the New Ingles, but they're walking along Roller Mill Road, and they're crossing a single lane bridge that doesn't have a sidewalk. And uh, if it's going to be replaced anyway, I think it'd be wise to go ahead and put a sidewalk on it so that it, it, it's safer to cross with foot traffic in the future. Um, the next thing is uh, uh, the Carpenter Building. I'd like to commend you on the investment made uh, in the future of recreation for our community there. Um, we have an opportunity to actually link the Carpenter Community Building to the Greenway. I don't know how familiar you guys are, but Mainspring has acquired a strategic piece of property that will allow the connection behind the library all the way through to the rec park and thus to the newly remodeled Carpenter Building. Um, that's a great idea. I mean, to me, that's pretty low hanging fruit that should be easy to get done that will benefit the whole community. Tying East Franklin in to, to South Franklin, I guess, via the Greenway, uh, I think would benefit everybody. Uh, that's about it. Uh, as a council member pretty soon, I'd, I'd like to say I'm at your disposal if I can help with that project at all. Like I said, I think it's a worthwhile endeavor and, and I'd like to see it done within the near future. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. Anyone else? Any changes to or additions to the agenda? Mr. Chairman, if I could add to old business, item 10C. Uh, that's just a discussion of the SEC appraisal for the <coughs> fire safety training complex. Anything else? That's all I have. Lori? Chester? No? Uh, one item under reports and presentation, just to, I'd like to give a brief update on the trade program. With Franklin High School and Southwestern okay. Community College. Please. <coughs> Where did we put that? Reports and presentations. I imagine that's where it yeah. works. Not going to be taking any action. That okay. makes sense. Anything else? Any motion to approve the agenda? Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion to second. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. All right. Reports and presentations. The trade program update. Um, approximately six months ago, we had some conversations um, between Southwestern Community College uh, and Franklin High School in regards to expansion of our trade program. Um, Ms. Shields and I talked about this this earlier. Um, Mr. Bill and I have had several conversations about where where we where we're at in Macon County uh, with 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 finding folks that can work in the trades. Uh, and what made me kind of get to think about this was the recent uh, addition of additional personnel that's going to be required at Shaw Industries may be may be a challenge for those folks. But the this talk to Dr. Baldwin um, and this this program is is coming to fruition um, and and we're seeing some activity in it. Um, and it looks like that, that the, the original plan of a student being able to be dual enrolled uh, at Franklin High School in Southwestern is gonna is gonna work. Um, we don't know at this point we don't know how many are going to be dual enrolled, but but the, that's the that's the road that the program's going down. So um, as we see that unemployment <coughs> continue to drop, I think it's even more important that, that we recognize programs like this. Um, 
you know, at some point there may be a requirement for some additional funds to, to help support that program. I hope I hope it takes off and they require and they have to come and, and need additional funding for it, but at this point they're not. But but it is we're, we're going down the road. It looks very favorable. Uh, looks like something that may be there to help. Good. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chair. You, Carl. Can I ask one question? Is the word articulation <coughs> being used anywhere? We used to have a relationship with Southwestern. It was an articulation between the school, two schools. Um, Collaboration is the word that I've heard. Okay. <coughs> it's a collaborative effort between Franklin High School and, and Southwestern, sharing of resources in regards to facilities, teachers, um, so that, that meets courses during the day and night courses. Uh, so we're hoping that we may be able, in addition to to garner some interest of some high school students as they go through the process to determine where, where they're going to go when they graduate from high school, we also want to leave the door open for opportunity for anybody who would want to move into a trade so they, they'll be able to go to those night classes to do that. And then our students, it will be a curriculum to them so, so they'll be able to actually take a class. So what's the next step, Carl? Enrollment. See how many we can get? Yeah, enrollment. Uh, and, uh, but you haven't decided yet what trades that students can work on. <coughs> Trade, trades are going to be... Uh, I didn't, I didn't figure we'd get it off the ground if we didn't have framers in there because Ronnie Bill pitch a fit. So it'll be it'll be trades like framing, electrical, heat and air, you know, plumbing. plumbing. What what we use to fuel our economy with for, for a large part. That's good. Good idea. We can just get the people. It's like we've always talked about them, get them to show up. Well, we, you know, we... we we feel like we've got a lot of, we're getting a lot of interest from the kids. So if, if we didn't have that, then we'd be dying. So so that's that's the first, I th that was a huge hurdle I thought. So, you know, if we don't, if we don't have interest, it's not gonna happen. So we'll, we'll just see, how, you know, I think, I think it's a, it's an opportunity uh, if we can make it happen. Well, the students that are participating in a course, will that count as a SEC FTE? Yes. Okay. That's good. <clears throat> Very good. All right. We'll move on to all business. <clears throat> Item A, discussion of the Board of Commissioners 2018 regular meeting schedule. Uh, we've had some discussion. We tried to have a meeting in Highlands this year like we've done in the past. It didn't happen. I just... As chairman, I just felt it would be easier and cleaner if we just went ahead and set a specific date. Uh, moving forward, uh, there's also been some discussion about uh, potentially having one in uh, Nantahala. However, I think there's some question about uh, uh, about whether or not that can work because of the uh, <coughs> Nantahala not being a municipality. Uh, and us also having some, I guess, IT potential IT issue there for everybody to be able to watch. So. I, I think you could have the meeting over there, notwithstanding the fact that it's not a, a non-municipality. County meeting can be held <coughs> anywhere within the and So anyway, let's open, let's open for discussion. So also, I have a conflict with the uh, April meeting. If you want to stick to the second Tuesday, I'm good with that. I just won't be able to be here. But if you don't mind moving it, I'll be happy to be here. <laughs> you in the first? I'll be there the first Tuesday and the third Tuesday and the fourth Tuesday, just not the second. Okay. Got one, got one day. <laughs> what What is, uh, it, there's nothing about budget and stuff like that, do you know? No. No, we well, can just move right along, Mr. Bill, he can throw up the chair. Stay with the second Tuesday. <clears throat> I'm, I'm, however y'all want to work it, I'm fine with it, I just can't be here that Tuesday. <clears throat> I know it's budget time, but it's He's saying it's not that crucial. And, uh, <coughs> We've had a discussion before about meeting in Ninahale and other communities, and it's a precedent he set. If you go to Ninahale, you're going to have to go to all the communities. You go to one, the next thing that requests you, you go to it too. Because Ninahale 
even though it is a distance away, is nothing more or less than a community. So I think the board needs to take that into consideration mm -hmm. once you start down that road. Uh, we found that out when we did way back when we were working on the subdivision ordinance. We were just going to hit, <coughs> like David said, the low-hanging fruit. Well, you don't do that. You go to one. Uh, <coughs> if Holly Springs requests it, you go there. Uh, if, if, if the 12 other communities or 13 other communities request it, you need to attend, you need to take that into consideration. And they will. And they might or might not, I don't know. But they certainly have proven that uh, but, so you need to take that into consideration, which I think when you, when you start moving these meetings out in the community, and I'd like the county manager to speak to it, I mean, does it, the information and everything, this is the county seat, so. And, you know, obviously we, you know, we've been discussing courthouse security and uh, everything like that. So, you know, we have here with an officer, I'm sure an officer, could travel with us but when you start like you had mentioned the, the streaming of the meetings a lot of people you know we're set up here to stream the video from the commissioner's boardroom I know a lot of people watch that and rely on that to stay plugged in also if you had a, an instance where um, we were discussing business and we needed to go access a file or, or pull a document um, whereas now we have to go just to the office or something we'd be, of course, if we were out and about, that would create a hardship to be able to, to move a discussion forward in the event we needed some information that was housed here at the county. So those are just my two cents. And that would also apply if we were meeting in Highlands, right? Yes. <coughs> You're saying not to meet in Highlands or in Halen? No, I'm saying, you know, any time we leave here, if we have to access a a document or, or something that we're not in our boardroom or where our offices are, it's going to create a hardship. Um, but you know that that's entirely up to up to you all. I'm just giving you some <coughs> considerations from an administration standpoint that that are strictly related to moving a meeting outside of, of the courthouse. I see. And you're going to the schools. Is that word? Not we're the school, the Highlands school? Yeah, well, if we go to Highlands, we use the Town of Highlands Commissioner's boardroom. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So I, my concern was technology, having access to technology and stuff. Mm -hmm. They'll be prepared there, but I, I, I'll give my two cents. I've been rolling it through my mind since of the pros and the cons, but I guess it's just like me driving down from Highlands for every meeting. It's just one of those things you got to do. If something is that important to you, then you come do it. So I don't think it's a it's a necessity. It's a pleasure. <coughs> but if there's somebody in the Highlands or Manahela for that matter, any of the outlying communities wants to come here, they have the opportunity. So I don't I don't think it's I, I don't personally I don't think the pros of moving it put outweigh the cons. And so I'm fine with leaving it here, but I, I definitely wanted to open it up for discussion. Well, I'm, have it, I'm so. fine with that. I'm just thinking, you know, man, uh -huh. as it's on high school, it is just a little more than another community like Holly Springs or Burnett Town. But uh, if we had one in Highlands, I think it'd be appropriate to share the same respect. Right. Well, Highlands is a little bit different than municipality, which we work together with them on a lot of things, just like we do the town of Franklin. Uh, I mean, we were partners on them on water systems, on, on many other things. Uh, so. The municipality is, is, is uh, has their own elected boards. Uh, it's, it's totally different than a, than a community such as Nine Hale, in my opinion, or any outlying community, any community. Well, uh, I think I, I, I understand and agree with, with a lot of what's being said. I think one thing that I keep remembering is when, and this may not be a fair comparison, but when the planning board made the tour of the communities. Um, some, some of those meetings were very well attended. Uh, they fed us good at just about all of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but without a doubt, whether it, was, whether it was very well attended or not, those in the community very much appreciated the fact that we made the effort to go, um, and, and, and you know, more more than on one occasion, we were told that. 
Um, I I agree with with County Manager. You know, if there's if there's a need for a document that's in his office, if if we're in Highlands or Nantahala or wherever, he can't he can't get to it very easily. Um, <clears throat> when you look at uh, from a technology standpoint, yeah, we meet Tana Highlands. They've got a fiber cable coming in, so they've got full bandwidth than this building's got. All schools have a substantial backbone, so it wouldn't be, I think, the two IT departments could coordinate easily being able to stream that video. So uh, there's, it, it certainly would, would take more effort on, on staff. Um, I guess I guess we just need to weigh out is you know is it is it is it worth it? But uh, I'll be an advocate of of having some meetings outside outside of this room. Well, another thing you got to remember: each one of these commu communities also has a has a meeting once a month or twice a month. Most of them uh, they have a fire department meeting, and then they have a community meeting. If you want to find out what's going on with the commissioners, you go to one of those meetings. We go to one went to two this month so far. If you want to find out as a commissioner, you can always bring it back to this board or uh, whatever the feelings are. But they'll start to let you know if you go, if you attend those meetings, the community meetings. So that was uh, that's another idea. You know, just attend the, the meetings in your district. And there's there's plenty of them to attend uh, without having to move the commissioner meeting. I mean, the commissioner this has been the commissioner's boardroom for how many years? Hundred. More than I've been lying. Yeah, me too. But so I'm just saying it's a precedent. It's uh, when you take the planning board out, which we've done before. I did that too, Carl. It, it's uh, some you have five, some you have one, some you have twenty-one. Mm -hmm. Kind of like, kind of like here tonight. Yeah. Now we have nine. Yeah. Like, same day we have. Same deal. Same deal we have. And, uh, and you'll find out most things if they're interested, they will get in touch with you. They will. If you go to these community meetings, they'll they'll talk to you. Probably more so than if you had a meeting there. I think a good measuring stick would be to ask your county manager <coughs> to talk with Dr. Baldwin. At one time, school boards met in the communities <coughs> but probably before I was a school board member. And just like to have a little measuring stick on why that went away. They still meet in Highlands and Atta Hale. Right. right. Uh, in the fall of the year and spring of the year. But uh, at one time, we would have a school board meeting at the Media Center Franklin High School and, you, and other schools. I don't know why that quit. And I think, I know Lonnie Crawford could tell you uh, why that. And it may be some of the things we're talking about here now that uh, you know, the population, people coming in, stuff like that. I just kind of like to know why that came back to the central office and that's where it's been all these years, except for Nana Halen Highlands, one the fall, one the spring. Could you do that? Just yeah, I could do that. And two, you know, it, it's the, a lot of times the, with the facility aspect of it, you know, also, it, instead, it, we're, we've got the business of the county to attend to, and then, you know, what's the setup going to be? How's the room going to be situated? You know, is it capable? Mm -hmm. it, 90 people do come um, you know I mean obviously we're not set up here if, for 90 people either but we can go to a courtroom um, if we need a closed session we have a room to go to a closed session and have a closed session if, if we need to do that um, just think with you know the more factors that that you have in addition to doing business of the county um, like you said it'll be a it'll, it could potentially create some, some problems in conducting that business just, and that's just logistics, nothing about the, uh, just logistically speaking. And if you go to the school, somebody has to open it up, somebody has to close it. So you're talking about, could and be scheduling. time and a half and things like that. Uh, that's what we'd run into before, trying to make sure everything was clean and uh, done upright and make sure somebody's there to open and close it. And you have to compensate that somewhere. But if, if the pleasure of the board is to, to have the meetings in the communities, we'll make it happen. Yeah. That's not, I'm just, 
merely putting my two cents in. We'll make it happen. I just my suggestion, if we go to Highlands, we have respect, we should do that, Haley. Since they have a high school, they're more than just another little community. But if it's an agreement, and it sounds like that there's not a flavor to do that, I'm willing to meet, continue the meetings here at the courthouse. That sounds to me the consensus that I'm gathering from most everybody is we'll just leave next year's meetings here. So, Can question you for a motion for adoption of the. What do we do with the 10th? The April meeting was the only other question. Well, do you want to move, move April, April to them would be April the 3rd? I won't be here. For yeah. moving. Let's, just let the, let's leave it let the vice. Let's leave it as. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. Save all I'll, the, I'll if you want to leave it as is, there'll be no need to, to do a, a publication because yeah. basically you'll continue the schedule of meetings that you've had. If, if one of those days should fall on a holiday, it would be on the next business day. Okay. But, uh, how does that, uh, speaking of that, how does that head on election day? I think we've run into that. Election day, I should say. It's November 13th is, uh, no, I don't have it. The 8th or the 6th is what we ran into last year. It had to come 8th of the We had to come and have a meeting. And just to, as a reminder, just as we'll continue this meeting to the joint meeting where we'll be hosting the joint meeting, then we rotate out the town of Franklin, we'll host a joint meeting with the town of Highlands in the county, and then the town of Highlands will host a joint meeting with the county right. and the town. So we right. will get to right. those right. municipalities. So, so, election is the first year of November, right? Yeah, we'll six. Six. Yeah. 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 Motion for we have a motion on the floor to approve as is, keep it on the second Tuesday for 2018, all right here. That works. Be no we adjustment second. needed we second. by way of resolution and advertising. Okay. So we, we don't even need to vote on this, we can just consensus. Well, I, 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 think, I think it's fine to vote on it. doesn't hurt to vote We've got a motion and a second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. But you're not changing. I think you're basically saying we're going to keep it the same. Sounds good. <coughs> Item 10B, change order, orders for the Robert C. Carpenter Community Building. Uh, we'll start with Arrowwood Construction mm -hmm. first. You have a change order in your agenda packet for Arrowwood Construction. This Arrowwood Construction has now completed uh, their work at the Robert C. Carpenter Building. During the course of construction, however, there were some adjustments and changes. Uh, Tom, if you want to, if you want to hit on those. Um, changes by Airwood Construction. That, that would be great. Tom, of course, is the architect. Thank you for coming tonight, Tom. No problem. Um, what you've got there is um, additional work that could have been done by county staff and could have been done by other people, but we've had uh, a lot of things come up, obviously, that you find when you get an existing building. One of them is for adding additional ceiling tile work. We've always anticipated to modify the ceiling grid and the ceiling tile that was there, but when we pulled it out, it turns out that a lot of the mains for the grid system had been modified or had to be modified. And so it got to be a little bit more complicated. Uh, a lot of the tile that got removed and replaced got damaged during the process, so we had to come back in and modify that as well. Uh, additional tile requests was just sloping some tile to the floor drains that were existing that when we redid the tiles in the bathroom. Um, the tower that's out in front there, we originally had it designed as a vinyl product going on there for economy sense. And since we don't have any vinyl on the rest of the building, we determined to remove that vinyl product, which is a credit, and replace it with a stucco product, which is, and we just used Portland cement stucco. We decided not to use the EFIS system, that, so that saved us a little bit of money, but it cost us more than the vinyl product that was there. Um, additional granite under the windows. Uh, we had granite sills on there, which the contractor had shown us that he did not have those included in his budget or in his pricing. Uh, we determined that we would pay for cost only for the material and he would he would be donating the labor so that that number had gotten negotiated to be the cost only for the granite sills. Additional baseboard and door requests when we remove the baseboard in the multipurpose room and we're replacing it with a vinyl base it didn't cover the edges of the terrazzo flooring in there so there was a terrazzo and then mortar and grout that had to be concealed so we had them install a one by painted black and then put the black uh, vinyl base on top of that so it all looks like it belonged. When we replaced the gutters, they determined there was a lot of uh, rotted roofing 
up on top, which we had to repair, repair that and replace the roofing area in those areas so it would flow into the gutter system. Uh, there's a deduct there for a terrazzo floor, which is they came in and polished the terrazzo in the flooring, and it was something that was unacceptable to us. Um, they told us they gave us their best effort, so we had somebody do it and deducted it from their contract amount. And then they damaged a handicap push button uh, with some of the acid that they had in there, so they had to replace that. They could have paid the vendor directly, but he wasn't an approved vendor, so the paperwork made it easier to uh, put it as a deduct to a change order and then us pay the vendor who's already, it was, it was silver glass, the windows and door guys that had to replace that push button. <clears throat> and that should be it on change orders for anything on the job, I think. The total Don't. change orders in the amount of $12,462. When you add this to the revised contract sum of $297,121, uh, this new change order will bring the total price of the contract to three hundred nine thousand five hundred eighty three dollars. You a motion to approve the change order? So moved as presented. A motion to approve another second. Is there something here we don't know? Not sure. Nothing. Still within budget, right? Mm -hmm. still, still within budget. Yeah. Check. Second. A second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Uh, Say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, change order number two, Bryson Enterprises. Bryson Enterprises, the original contract amount was $110,220.65. This change order is for $2,586.80, and it's for additional asphalt for the new left lane at the traffic light. There was some additional area when the concrete slab was removed, as well on the north side of the building. So we, this contract was a square foot price uh, that we got for um, the asphalt, and it was simply more square foot uh, in the paving by $2,000. $2,586.80. And 80 cents. All right, we get a motion to approve the change order. I want to say it's more straightforward. Motion to approve. Motion okay. to approve. Second. The second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, all business C, uh, uh, appraisal. Derek, SEC yes. appraisal. Yes. Uh, received the. Uh, appraisal on the six acres for the Southwestern Community College um, fire safety training complex on Siler Road. Uh, if you'll recall, uh, in previous negotiations, we were to get an appraisal and they were to get an appraisal. Um, we would then send those appraisals off to the state for review. Dr. Thomas forwarded that on to me today. If you'll recall, uh, our appraisal for this six acres was in the amount of 375000 the amount that Southwest, the Southwestern appraisal came in at 386,000. So that's, pretty close. you know, that's pretty close on that. Feel good with those appraisals. And Dr. Thomas had told me today, all we'll need is a consensus. Their first appraisal was about uh, 100 and, yep. 180. The, 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 both of the, each of these appraisals are um, done by North Carolina certified general appraisers. And, uh, Feel got we have a quality product they do as well they're close so the next step is just a consensus to send our appraisal into the state along with theirs and keep this project moving forward okay so no need for a motion just a simple consensus so it's gone so you show ahead it's 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 yeah it's under on <laughs> We need this bill. Thank you, Derek. Yes, sir. Moving on to new business. Uh, consideration of agreement to provide recreation opportunities with Reed Toomey. I'll speak to it just very briefly. Um, I already have an agreement right now with Reed Toomey. These are uh, some uh, story walks. Have you heard that term, story walks? There's one already on the Greenway, and this would allow for an additional stretch of the Greenway to uh, be uh, utilized for solar off. You might want to ask Brittany, she'll be able to answer the uh, specifics of the product, but I think it's
it's essentially going to be like what we already have. Here. The first year we put one at um, the rotary loop along the Greenway and one at Parker Meadows. And then this year we added one um, along the Highlands Greenway that connects to the Bascom. And then the other one that we have prepared to install pending this agreement is um, past the dog park um, down by Wesley's Playground. Yes, sir. Uh, make a motion as a frog lives on. <laughs> uh, I'll have to answer to them. Uh, we can thank the board for this in the project. They're supportive. We've met with Duke Energy to make sure there's not Good. any um, problems with any of the east of there. Um, Chester's, we've looked at the parcels with Chester and Frog is in the Very good. I make a motion to accept as presented. Second okay. that motion. Second by Commissioner Gillespie. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good work. Thank you. Thanks, Brady. That's really an awesome project. All right. Is it being used, Oh, yes. Um, we have, um, we, uh, we just switched them out. So the original one was at the Rotary, because they're all interchangeable, the stories are. So um, whatever book was there, it was first installed, and so mm -hmm. it's since been switched. So the stories change. Um, Seth Adams with the, the rec department called me weekly to ask me to switch the book at Parker Meadows. Not because the kids got tired of reading them, because the adults that utilized that wanted a new story. And they're geared towards um, children, but they, they, the adults enjoy it just as much. So um, they, get, they get utilized often. We get pictures all the time of the kids out there. Um, they out use that one. You can see them every time you go out And um, I'd, have to, I'd have to thank, um, just to probably thank Union Academy. They sent the students out there to help us actually switch those boards. There's 15 boards for every story walk that are installed in four Allen Ranch heads. So they brought um, students out to help us take the ones off of the Greenway, go to Parker Meadows, take those off, replace them, and clean them, and, um, and reinstall them. So we really appreciate them for doing that as well. And we're excited to have another book to put on the, um, to put down by the West's Playground. And then next year, we plan to do a map that'll show, that we can put at the Chamber of Commerce that shows where all of the story walks are, and where all of the little libraries are, and where our local library is, just to promote the literacy opportunities in Macon County. As well as hopefully put one at Cowie School. That's our location we picked out for next year. It's paid for through donations, right? It is. The community, we have community businesses, including Cole Pepper, who supported our most recent one, and Tate Landscaping, both supported um, the one that will be installed. So, um, Read to Me funds it, and then we have partnerships with local businesses and community organizations that fund right. it. Great. All right, moving on to the consent agenda. Uh, if there's anyone that would like to have something pulled, we'll pull it for further discussion. If not, uh, we'll take a motion to approve the agenda, the consent agenda. What, Diane? Are you here just about to help them, please? And just in case you have questions about it. I didn't find the attack. Oh, here we go. It's popped up. So we'll pull pull that one for discussion, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Yeah, since Diane is here. Well, Jimmy, you're the liaison. You good with them? I'm good with them, yeah. Okay. No. They're meeting. They're, I, I missed. They're meeting at the same. They met at six o'clock today, so I missed today's meeting. So, so there's some of them I don't understand. So. There's just some of them I've never heard of. I mean, does he? Let's hope you don't catch it. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm good with it. I just I, I, I haven't been able to see the attachment until just there. Um, is it the IUDs that you've got the question about? Is it is it are these new to the health department or are they new to the, the um, health are they Skyla and Kalina are both new IUDs. I gave them I about halfway down. Um the Kalina, fact, I found that one. Mm -hmm. And then we've never had two different fees for the same procedure before, but these particular services Medicaid tells us that we cannot charge more than what we pay for. So that's the reason they're listed twice. But insurance and our sliding fee scale would allow us to uh, actually charge what our cost to provide the service would be, not just the cost of the device. So that's the reason there are two prices for each of those IUDs. Um, and with that, even if somebody was paying out of pocket and they were a percent pay, they would still not pay more than $100. So some of them are very expensive and we probably won't use them very often, but if you'll notice that Skyla is a 
for a small framed person and we don't have that opportunity with the other ones that have been in production. The Board of Health approved all of these too. They did. The tetanus shot, that's a dip through, that's a totally different tetanus shot. No, the vaccines are all just increase in prices. So if we don't act on them, let's just take the shingles vaccine, for example. If we give as many shingles vaccines as we did last year and we don't raise the price to cover the cost, we're going to be losing well over $1,000 just on that one vaccine. Are they changing the vaccine on the shingles? Mm -mm. Just the price. <laughs> All right, any further questions and take a motion? Did you motion? Mm -hmm. I'm waiting on one. Oh, okay. I'm motion. Yeah. Motion to approve. approve. Second. Second by Gillespie. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you so much. All right, we have some appointments. Uh, there, I'm gonna bump us out of order here. I know the community funding polls is gonna take a little bit more discussion. Let's go ahead and do uh, the two that probably should. Let's do item B, the Highlands TDC. Uh, they're recommending two new members. One is in replacement of Wolfgang Green, whose term has expired. And the other one, I'm not <coughs> recollecting, but uh, one of them was the town of Highlands representative, which I think Wolf no. Who was the town of Highlands representative? Brian. He's going to be the new one. Who's he replacing them? I'm trying to remember whose term expired. And then the restaurant representative was Wolfgang, whose term expired, and now they're they're putting on Laura, Laura Huerta. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Brian's the town of Highlands, uh, recommended by the town board up there, and then Laura Huerta is the uh, chamber's nomination from Lakeside Restaurant. So I would recommend that we approve both of those. We can get a motion. Motion approve. to approve. We've got a motion to approve. And second. And second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, the planning board, uh, the town of Highlands is going to, as recommended, they place their, just like the town of Franklin does, place their town planner, zoning administrator, uh, Andrew Bowen, uh, to build a Highlands area slot on the county planning board. The motion to approve. So moved. Motion to approve. Second. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, go ahead with the community funding pool. Okay. Thank you. Um, a while back we had discussed the community funding pool. They were having difficulty uh, receiving applications. And in the current budget, the community funding pool distributes 75 or makes recommendations to distribute $75,000 to nonprofits throughout our community to this board. So it is, an it is an important board, important part of our budget. And with, uh, with the request of the chairman, I, I began uh, kind of looking back with the, the assistance of Chester and Mike and Pam Ledford, and we have combed through minute documents, minute books, to try to find and piece together um, how the community funding pool came about. It came about September 11th of 2000. And at that time, uh, Jennifer Jones presented the recommendations to the commissioners uh, for the community funding pool task force. At this time, they recommended that the community funding pool have a 12-member board with two-thirds representing nonprofits and a third representing members of the community. Of the two-thirds representing the nonprofits, they designated Macon County Community Foundation Making Program for Progress, Peggy Crosby Center, and the Volunteer Council of Franklin. They designated that out of those two thirds, those four nonprofits were to each have one member. The why is not, I have not been able to find that, why they had designated those four nonprofits to have one member. With that being said, also the two county commissioners that sit on that board as well are not voting members, but there are 12 voting members, as I just said. So I got the applications, and, and what I found first with concerning the structure of the board, need to make you aware of a few things. 
The Volunteer Council of Franklin, which, used, which had a designated member, no longer exists. So with that being said, um, what I would propose at this time to accommodate uh, the number of applications that we have uh, for, to serve on this board, which I'll go through right here in a second, um, to make this board a 13-member board and to move another nonprofit organization up into the ones that are designated that only have three now. So you would move another nonprofit in and just going down the list, the reach was right under it. So if you moved reach into one of the ones that had to have a designated member, that would leave us again with your four designated nonprofits. You would also have you would have your four designated nonprofits, then you would have four nonprofits and five representatives of the community. Now, I think what that will do is it's going to give us an odd number. Right now you have 12 voting members, so there's potential for a tie. And it will also add another community representative where there's now four, that would add five, and it would kind of give you a better balance between the community members and those representing nonprofits. So it's kind of a, you know, I look at it as a two-fold benefit. You would have an odd number of members, um, and you would also have uh, increase your community membership by one on that board. So the first thing I think we should discuss um, is just that. If the board, after I've looked at that, this, uh, that would be my recommendation. Now, in addition to that, um, as this board controls, uh, or does not control, but recommends to the Board of Commissioners funding tied to the $75,000 we have set aside in the budget, uh, Chester and I were talking, and right now where we're going back through the minutes and finding we've had to piece together how this board came about through minutes, um, it would probably be good in a good time if we could go ahead and, and make a set of bylaws for this board, something that we could have in concrete um, that can kind of serve as a guide to them, uh, as well as you know assist us when we go back through this process again uh, of reappointing members and, and things of that nature. We will we'll try to, um, as we look at that, try to embrace what they're doing and what has worked well in the past, um, along with anything else um, that in discussions with them uh, that they feel are needed and discussions with you all that you feel are needed. But while we're doing that, I, I think it's important that if we change change the board to 13, move another nonprofit up into the volunteer council slot, which again is reach, then you're gonna have again four designated nonprofits mm -hmm four other nonprofits and five community members as opposed to the four that serve now. And again, that will allow us um, better balance, I feel. It will allow you to break a tie. You'll have 13 members um, on that board. So if we do that, we can go ahead and get these folks appointed, let them go ahead and start the advertising process. You'll find, as, as I'm reading through these names, there are a few people that have been on here um, that have been with this board since its inception, along with some new faces that will get acclimated to, to the way they're doing things. They have the application forms. We'll just need to get this advertised in the newspaper so we can get this process rolling uh, for these nonprofit organizations. Mm -hmm. So if, if those, those changes that I mentioned, if we could go ahead and make those, we could get this, uh, these members appointed tonight and in the meantime, Chester and I, while they're advertising, uh, getting all that out there, Chester and I could work together to bring some bylaws back to the board for consideration at a later date. It's time to move it up. So the names will be, um, at this point, I have received commitment from the Macon County Community Foundation. I haven't got that application in yet, so we will not need to worry about that tonight. Making program for progress, another de that's a designated seat, Patrick Betancourt, Peggy Crosby Center, 
that's at that uh, designated seat, Robert E. Smith. Reach, if the board votes to make that a designated seat, Andrea Anderson. Then your nonprofits that are not designated. Those four, Emily Ritter from the March of Dimes, uh, Tyler Shook, Rotary Club in Highlands, Rick Westerman, Habitat for Humanity, Diane Cotton, read to me, Sheila Jenkins as a community representative, Bobby Contino as a community representative, Karen Wallace as a community representative, Jennifer Jones as a community representative, and Kyle Garner as a community representative. So that would be your five community representatives and your four nonprofits and then your four designated nonprofits. So I think the first thing we'd have to do before we approve these applications is approve the recommend, recommended changes that I suggested, which would be increasing the board membership to 13, moving reach into a designated nonprofit slot, and adding a fifth community member. You mentioned bylaws. Is that, or, or does that fit in there? In doing your research, how did we ever get into a community funding pool? How well, did that, um, where we're taking tax funds and giving them, or you know, allocating to nonprofits. What's the science or the logic behind that? I, I think somebody can help me on this. I, I wasn't here, but you had a lot of people coming to to you as the leadership of the county asking for monies and to get away from that. We still do. Uh, you're, you're right, but I don't think you have as many people that were come, that comes now and as far as you once did. Uh, I, I believe if I can remember a little bit of reading about it in the paper and stuff like that, you were ahead of them an influx of people that were coming all the time asking for X number of dollars. And so then you came back and just put your money in a pool and left that people requested to somebody else and they, they would. You also got a chance to look at all of those at one time instead of spread out through the year, right. understanding that there was a finite amount of money that would be set aside to uh, work on those uh, public purpose projects through nonprofits. Uh, and I think the thought was is you might get that money where it needs to be a little bit better if you consider all those applications at one time. And uh, you know that along with you know the school of thought of you know rather than providing a service uh, and the government providing the whole service, if you give a, a nonprofit Thirty-five hundred dollars. They leverage that non. They leverage that thirty-five hundred dollars with other monies they're getting, and they're able to provide that service, which otherwise um, the government could have, you know, staff, supplies, everything else. That was kind of alluded to through the back through the research and whatnot. But it came about in September eleventh of two thousand, um, and it was Commissioner Green made the motion seconded by Commissioner Davis and that is where they approved um, the community funding pool 12 member board that's where the two-thirds requirement from from the uh, nonprofit community again with one-third being designated one-third undesignated as well as the four community members uh, that's where all those kind of skeleton of rules for this committee came about and that's really one as far as the formation of the committee and how it's Arranged. That's the only guidance um, that we have back through the years on, on that. But you can, you know, as you look through the minutes and, and they're discussing things, you pick up common threads uh, through that. M Mr. Shields alluded to it, uh, and Chester had mentioned some of the same things that we found back whenever the funding pool would come and present recommendations. They would discuss, you know, the funding pool, the whys the, uh, of the funding pool. And, those were common threads that seemed to go through. Then we strengthened the application process in 2007. We changed the application process because it was to make it more to where the committee would have something tangible to work with. Mm -hmm. They could, and he puts the pressure, puts pressure on him to this board. Right. And Mr. Shields might have a special 
I mean, he's been involved with uh, kids place. with kids place for, for thirty years. So his his alliance there is, is very strong, and he would want just so Mr. Shields is going to he's he's going to petition that, that you advocate for twelve twelve grand. You know, I've got something else, or, or Mr. Hickman has something else. He wants to advocate for his thing. So this that's when we changed the application process in two thousand seven. And I made it pretty. And what you're talking about, how do you, with the members on the board, how do you cut out the conflict of interest? Derek and I had some discussion about that, and I think, you know, in the absence of bylaws, then Robert's rules of order are going to be applicable, and people are going to need to recuse themselves or okay. uh, is is basically what you had in place right now. Okay. And I think I think you're exactly right. And you know, like you said, there are, you know, there are an application out there that is that is a very good application, very clear, um, and gets the information we that we will need and they will need to make the recommendation, and you all will need to make the decision. But we just need to get these documents, the the structure of this board. We need to get it formalized. So we have it in a, in a document that the board's aware of, that each board's aware of, that we can continue this going forward and we won't have a situation where one day we might say, hey, we ain't got, you know, there's nobody here to be a member and we, we need to get all these applications uh, turned in. Derek, so, you, of course, it's, it's an advisory board and so whatever recommendations they make, you'll have the opportunity to look at it and see if Concerns. So, and then all nonprofit funding throughout the year has to come through this board, right? Let's do that. But that's the intention uh, that I've seen it seen it happen differently sometimes. But I think, by and large, that's what happens. They don't have to. You can bring anything you want. I think. It, I think there's been some times where there were things that were extraordinary that need to be looked at before. The next cycle came along and the board dealt with it. Maybe we need to advertise it, continue this funding pool, advertise in the community that hey, if you're a nonprofit and you want to seek funds. Well, they do, they'll find the applications, that's no problem. I mean, they discredited how many last time? 20 something? Yeah, quite a bit. Yeah. Put some applications for the 13 out. number. It seems like a pretty large group. Obviously, you give it a lot of thought going into this. you have any concerns about that or you think it needs to be that big to get to get every proper representation? Well, again, I think you're going to have, just like with any of these volunteer boards, you're going to have, not everybody's going to be able to show up at once. And I think, you know, that gives you uh, the ability to just have that many more opportunities to get somebody to be there. And I was trying to stay as close to what I had as far as guidance that I had from the past. I was trying to keep that as close as I could without totally confusing y'all. Worse than this is confusing me. Because it's been a... Can you do it all on one motion? I'm going to ask for a motion for the rule change first. Motion to make the rule change and recommend the county manager. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Then let's make a recommendation on the, that was 12 members, correct? Yes, that was 13. That was 12. We, we have, yeah, we, on, we we're waiting names. on the 13th application. The 13th application. Let's get a motion to approve this. Got a motion to approve. Gillespie. Second. Second. Michelle's all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. I think now, that's what it. about that 13th one? Is there anything in the motion that we, if you go ahead and move the 13th one in there without having to come back to us? Well, or? I have a, uh, I've got a commitment from this individual. Again, it's a designated um, agency, so I'll circle the wagons back. But at least now, you know, there's four people. Uh, we got enough to get started. There's got there's enough to get started, enough to get to advertising out there, and we'll firm that that third okay. one up. Well, that, that's it for the this agenda. I think there is a need uh, for closed session to preserve the attorney-client privilege. Brett Chester. Yes, and also the. Uh, to discuss the possible acquisition of some real property and to uh, direct the county.
county manager and county attorney as to how to deal uh, with negotiation. Are you expecting any action? Uh, no. All right. And when we come out of our closed session, we are not going to be adjourning. We're going to be recessing our meeting until November the 28th, Tuesday, November 28th at 6 p.m. at the Robert C. Carpenter Community Building located at 1288 Georgia Road in Franklin uh, for the purpose of holding a joint meeting with the Franklin Town Council and the Town of Highland Board of Commissioners. So we'll, we'll recess. Uh, we'll uh, December 4th. December 4th? Yes, sir. Do you anticipate any action after closed session? No action after closed session. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks, John. John.